Hello and welcome back to yet another episode of Mind of Steel. This is the weekly delve into the wacky, wonderful, bizarre world of some of Britain's most ludicrous conspiracy theorists. People like Mark Steele, the man who famously believes that uh, lamp posts are in fact deadly weapons of the state intended to kill us all. Mm. It's a strange belief, but not as strange as some of the people that we are about to meet. Because a few weekends ago, at the start of May in the year 2024, many of Britain's most wacky conspiracy theorists got together in a tent on a rainy field in the Lake District in the northwest of England. It was a truly bizarre gathering. People from all over the country gathered to hear some of the least sane speakers that anyone might ever have heard. And we also have to thank a gentleman who goes on the internet by Thoughts from the Edge of the Matrix. That's his nom de guerre on YouTube and Rumble. And he's kindly provided us with some exclusive videos of what just happened at this festival. And I think you'll agree, what unfolded in that wet weekend in the Lake District was truly bonkers. And one of the main reasons why it was bonkers was because one of the headline speakers was a gentleman from the exact opposite side of the country, specifically Gateshead in the northeast of England, a man we know as Britain's most ludicrous conspiracy theorist, Mark Steele. Yes, he was the headline speaker. And we join him now in that very same tent. And he's being introduced by a lady that uh, we will soon learn a little bit more about. I can say that I knew that from the very beginning that Mark Steele was the real deal. And uh, yeah, Mark Steele is our guest, but also he's publishing. Yeah, so welcome Mark Steele. God bless you, Dolores. Mark Steele is apparently the real deal, and she knew it all along. And who is she? Well, she is none other than Dolores Carhill, an Irish professor of molecular biology. So, an actual real academic. It seems quite bizarre that uh, any real academic might be fooled by Mark Steele's ridiculous conspiracy nonsense. Except when you realise that Dolores Carhill is maybe best described as a former academic. She used to teach year one medicine students and is now no longer allowed to do so, mainly because during the COVID pandemic, she came out with a lot of very bizarre conspiracy theories, most of which were entirely rejected by the institution that she worked at. One of her theories is that uh, COVID-19 is a hoax. And of course, like everyone at that uh, bizarre festival that we're looking into, she's an anti-vaxxer. Um, so she's about as far from the mainstream as you can possibly get without actually becoming Mark Steele. So before we rejoin Mark Steele's thrilling speech, I, I know you are dying for me to get to it, Let's rejoin Professor Dolores Carhill with a, a little interaction between herself and a Sky News reporter. That's Tom Cheshire, who is uh, one of Sky News's roving reporters. And she has a, a bit of a bone to pick with Tom because she is concerned that Tom might have turned up to this festival in order to disparage or, or bring into disrepute some of the people who are speaking there. <laughs> and worse still, she is concerned that Tom might refer to her as a conspiracy theorist. So just to let you know, my name is Dolores. Yeah, yeah, I know that, yeah. In the law now, and this conversation is lawful. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah? yeah. Okay. Great. So, just so you know, you will be if you portray me or any of us in any way that may be disadvantages to us now or in the future, that you will be liable for that. Yeah, but I mean, we know how media law works. This bizarre conversation might take a bit of decoding. Dolores refers to the conversation as being lawful, and in sovereign citizen parlance, lawful is uh, the antonym of legal. So legal pertains to the statutory law, the law that is practiced in British courts. Lawful refers to natural law or, or their own private wackadoodle interpretation of law that they believe 
holds some greater force. Of course, it doesn't. And like almost everything else that Dolores Carhill believes, this is a conspiracy theory that uh, has been shown by British courts to be completely bonkers time and time again. Conspiracy theorists never win. But that isn't going to stop former Professor Dolores Carhill from issuing a very stern threat to this chap, uh, Tom Cheshire, the reporter from Sky News. So I'll just tell you, for any time I or anyone here are involved in anything that you may portray us or Sky News individually, my rate will be a thousand an hour for any correspondence if it looks like that we're being portrayed in any way that would undermine our reputation. If you send me a letter, I have to send you a thousand. No, no, if, I, if, you, if you accuse me in law yeah. or, or harm me by harming my reputation and my trademark, my name, Dolores and Dolores Cattle, so any use of my name and my trademark and in any way that would cause you to be misrepresenting that you are both personally liable and it would be a precedence. Which so there you go. Stern warning has been issued to Tom Cheshire and his cameraman. Whatever you do, do not call conspiracy theorist Dolores Carhill a conspiracy theorist. Because if you do, she believes that natural law, which is a, a kind of legislation that exists only in the imagination of a certain kind of sovereign citizen conspiracy theorist, of which Dolores Carhill is a classic example, well, she believes that that natural law entitles her to a um, £1,000 per whatever, not specified, in order to uh, redress whatever it is she feel has been a slight to her name. Well, so there we go. We, we've had that warning out of the way. Under no circumstances should any of you do what I just did, which is to refer to Dolores Carhill as a completely bonkers conspiracy theorist. And now, with that out of the way, I've got some bad news for you, which is that, unfortunately, we've missed most of Mark Steele's speech. But we have turned up in time for the Q&A at the end. So let's have a listen to some of the questions that members of this Weekend Truth Festival chose to ask Britain's most ludicrous conspiracy theorist. I mean, if you could ask him anything, what would you ask him? Right, we're going to do a little bit of Q&A. If anyone's got any uh, questions, if you don't want to run off to the toilet. Now, just a warning to everyone who is still paying attention. What follows is anti-vax nonsense conspiracy theory. Not something that I endorse it in any way. Everything that follows is pure nonsense. Don't get your medical advice from a YouTube channel. And if you're foolish enough to disregard that information, please don't take your medical advice from Britain's most ludicrous conspiracy theorist, Mark Steele, because he does not know what he talks about. He's an idiot, as is every other anti-vaxxer. So please, now you have that big fat disclaimer in your mind, let's have a listen to this stupid, stupid question. Anyway, my question is, I have a member of my close family, my daughter, and a very good friend, and both of them were bullied, coerced, whatever, into having only one jab, but they've both been unwell since. So I would love to hear more about these protocols you're talking about, Mark. Test with an adm magnet, see if you get an attachment to deltoid. If you're half, get down to doctors, get your adm magnet, take a witness with you, go to doctors, and knock on the door and go in and go, right, what, the f what have you injected me with? And kick up a fuss. If you have to punch his face in, right? If, you ha if you're forced to, he gets a cheeky. If he gets cheeky and starts talking about safe and effective, right? And you've got to stick a one on his jaw. What have you injected me? I want it removed. I want that removed. If you know anybody who's had it and it does attach, get them to the doctors. They can, you've seen them surgically remove it in Russia so they can remove it, right? This, of course, is the extreme militant wing of the anti-vax movement. Um, not only, according to Mark Steele, should you avoid taking any vaccines, but you should also punch doctors in the face. Um, if we lived in a more enlightened age where people actually got in trouble for inciting others to do dangerous, reckless, and quite frankly, illegal things, Mark Steele would be in prison again a long time ago. But 
sadly, we don't live in that timeline. We live in a timeline where crazy nutters like Mark Steele are allowed to, to wander freely. And more troubling than that, we live in a timeline in which people who know no better turn to Mark Steele for medical advice. I've just got a quick question. You did mention the PCR test. I managed to get through, but except for one, I took one. But how do we know if there is some residual um, from the PCR test? And is there somewhere we, is there some way we can detox from it? Uh, I'm not really sure on the detox for the PCR. What I do know, you must protect the eyewear. If they start pulsing lights, do, they need direct point source, so do not look at them. Because you can imagine, you're walking down the street, lights start to pulse like that, first thing you're going to do, what's going on up there? Disaster. So the question, the, the, the ridiculous question, was about detoxing from a PCR test, which, as we all know, consists of nothing other than a, uh, a cotton wool swab inserted into a nostril. Quite how you detox from that, I have absolutely no idea. But fortunately, neither does Mark Steele, because he failed to answer that ridiculous question. And in fact, he provided a ridiculous answer that was wholly irrelevant to what was asked. But actually, he was reading the room, because Mark Steele's sunglasses seemed to be a topic of great interest to everybody present. I see you wearing dark glasses, and I just want to ask, are they Polaroid glasses? Um, and also there's blue light glasses that you need to wear for EMFs, or whatever. Can you just explain It depends. The if I'm on the road, I'll have mirror, mirror coated, right? There's nothing special about them. You can get them from any supermarket. I'll get mine from TK Max. I found that Timberland are a really good make because the coating doesn't come off as quickly. I'm sure the Timberland brand of outdoor goods and clothing will be absolutely thrilled to know that Britain's most ludicrous conspiracy theorist has endorsed their product. But I don't think Mark's endorsement is all that consistent, because remember that chat that we had with Dolores Carhill and Tom Cheshire, the reporter from Sky News? What well, did you spot what was happening in the background whilst she and Tom were discussing whatever the hell was going on in her fruity little imagination? Yep, yeah, but that's Mark Steele there. And what's he not wearing on his face? Well, it's, it's the sunglasses, the exact same sunglasses that we see him wearing a few minutes later. It's almost as if this whole thing about sunglasses is a ridiculous lie that Mark Steele has just invented. Perhaps because he believes that if he is seen wearing sunglasses, that makes him cool, like maybe Arnold Schwarzenegger or, or some other kind of 1980s pop or action star. It, it's a ridiculous affectation that if these people were even semi-sensible, they would see through as, as transparent, utter nonsense. But of course, we're dealing with conspiracy grifters. So obviously nonsensical, bullshit things like that, do not seem to register. They are operating on a higher plane, as we may see from the next question that was posed to Britain's most ludicrous conspiracy theorist. So with regards to evidence and what they're doing within our local environment, is it worthwhile actually purchasing some of the gadgets that measure the 5G radiation? You'll never measure 5G with a gadget, all right? right. 5G fires a beam, so you'll, you can measure background radiation, basically what I call side lobe leakage. You'll measure the leakage from the, from the antenna, but you need to know exactly where the orientation from the antenna to the target. So you'll see a sweeping pattern, but you're not, you're not gonna pick up that specific uh, point source. Mark Steele evidently believes that 5G works something along similar lines to George Lucas's Death Star. He believes that it emits some kind of tight beam of deadly radiation that would, of course, obliterate anything that it crosses paths with, uh, which, which of course is bonkers. It, it's something that only conspiracy theorist Mark Steele has dreamt up, but these guys are entirely lapping it up. Now, I, I'm not actually against this advice though, because 
if any of these people were to spend money on uh, these devices that allegedly can measure radiation from 5G phones, the chances are they would not be able to do anything. That, that these cheap devices typically aren't even able to detect signals in the bands that modern 5G phone systems use. So they can all save a little bit of money and maybe afford to go to one more of these ludicrous festivals if they don't buy one of these ridiculous 5G detection devices. Um, I've got a question about the cameras going up in South Lancashire. There's a lot of... Um, yeah. yeah. They're all yellow. Are these exactly the same as the ULS cameras in London? Or uh, I'd, have to have a, I'd have to have a specific yeah. look at it to give you a, a true answer. But what I'm going to tell you, the whole infrastructure, the whole 5G, this whole control, transport, blah, 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 it's all part of the fifth generation weapons platform to kill you. Something quite bizarre about this Q&A session, which is that Mark Steele doesn't actually seem to be directly answering that many of the questions he was asked. It's almost as if he has no idea what he's talking about. But nobody seems to have noticed that. He, he seems to be dodging and evading just about every single question. And yet the audience of Weekend Truth Festival are absolutely loving it. You know when folks say to you, well, you know they're killing us with the air, the water, the food, everything. And folks say to us, how come they're not killing themselves? I've got two theories, and I want to know if I'm right or if you can put us right. The first, I think they're either non-human, or they've sold the souls to the devil, to the occult. Oh. Am I right or am I wrong? I'm going to pause the video just for a minute to allow you to ponder for yourself what the answer to this question might be. Remember, we're talking about the people who manufacture 5G telephone systems, ULEZ cameras, modern medicines, especially vaccinations. Well, are these people non-human or have they sold their souls to malign occult entities? Just one more moment, have a think about it. And now I'm going to give you the answer courtesy of Mark Steele. Right, the soul, that's soul the devil, right? And the reason why, look, they're not bothered about getting dead, right? Because if they were alive and the people found out what these kitty killer cults have done, they'd probably rip them limb from limb, yeah. right? So, you know, these people just topping themselves and going off to see it in this land, you know, hot, I call the hot box. They're off the hot box in any event. If your answer was that they have sold their souls to the devil, then give yourself a pat on the back. It means you are truly in sync with Britain's most ludicrous conspiracy theorist. It means your consciousness has been raised to a sufficiently high level that you are ready for the next bit of uh, Q&A that we encounter in this bizarre performance. I'm going to kind of warn you that Quite a lot of what was discussed at this Q&A didn't really fit the, the typical mould of Q&A. It, it was more just a, a free-form floating discussion in which Mark Steele and members of this carefully self-selected audience just let their freak flags fly. <laughs> OK, a quick solution for all them billionaires that think they're safe in a bunker. They haven't thought of uh, me because all you need to do is find where the air vents are, put a dead cat on the top, <laughs> and then fleas off that cat, get down in the bunker and they'll die itching. Brilliant. Because nobody <laughs> will have packed in the bunker a shitload of flea spray. <laughs> all right, well done. Kit Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> See, well, you, you, kind of, you kind of want a bit of joviality, can you? Eh? I mean, that's what it's all like to be human, isn't it? Eh? A bit of a laugh about it all. And with that all too human moment of joviality out of the way, we must bid adieu to the crazy nutters who populated Weekend Truth Festival 2024. So goodbye to the anti-vaxxers, the sovereign citizens, the flat earthers, the urine drinkers, the chemtrail believers and the 9-11 truthers. 
You were all there briefly for one sweet moment under one tent. And now you've all gone your separate ways to spread the nonsense and disinformation <laughs> and maybe the love that we all shared for a few moments. At least, of course, until the next gathering where they will gleefully attend as an old man who sometimes wears sunglasses as a bizarre affectation, rants about things he doesn't understand. And then they will all applaud once again. Isn't the world of conspiracy theories wonderful? And you will see me in one week's time with some more wonderful conspiracy theories. And just a request, if you've stayed this long into the video, could you give me one of those likes? And if you haven't subscribed, well, why don't you? It makes my numbers so much better. And the better my numbers are, the more anxiety Mark Steele feels. So if you want to annoy Mark Steele, like and subscribe my videos. It's that simple. And if that's the way you feel, I will see you in one week's time.